I'm sure when you hear the Oregon Trail, it probably conjures up some sort of memories from your past. The Oregon Trail is kind of a staple in educational video games, with a bunch of re-releases, graphical updates, merchandise, etc, etc, etc. Merchandise includes things like board games to better profit off your nostalgic feelings. And because I'm dumb enough to buy into all of that, today on Loot and Junk Media, we are going to be looking at the Oregon Trail card game, an exclusive to Target, believe it or not. I mean, you can buy it on Amazon, but real Target fans know where their alliance lies. If you have seen my Pac-Man board game review, I mentioned how I absolutely hated these Oregon Trail dice, and that opinion still stands. However, in this video I'm going to be elaborating on why I absolutely detest these sticker fest of a dice. Please note that this video is not really a tutorial on how to play. I'll actually link an official video that teaches you to play in the description below. This video is a review slash comparison video, so I'm not going to really go too much into depth on some of the rules. I'll, I'll give you a basic general overview. I do have some complaints about certain rules, so that's kind of what you should expect. But again, not a tutorial. Before we actually get to the card game, let's actually talk about the PC game. The Oregon Trail I and many of you guys are probably familiar with is the 1985 version released on the Apple II and for you 90s kids out there, the DOS and Apple Macintosh version released in the 1990s. Regardless of which version you're playing on, most of them are pretty straightforward travel simulators. You see, you play as a family trying to get from Independence, Missouri to Willamette, Oregon. Willamette. Basically, the goal of the game is to teach children about the real Oregon Trail and how pioneers used it to travel through the U.S. from the east to the west in search of new opportunities. This, of course, was before we had highways and gas-powered cars. You know, around 1848. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the classic version along with the deluxe DOS and Macintosh version. I will note the deluxe DOS version is the clear better version out of all these three. The classic version had some animations, but mostly used a lot of text to basically convey the story to the player. You start the game by choosing your class or occupation. Some versions allow you to be a banker or a carpenter, where more advanced versions would allow you to be something like a doctor or a farmer. In all versions, I decided to be a banker, which was pretty worth it because I got to start out with more simoleons than the other classes. Before you start your journey, you have to purchase some goodies to help aid you along the way. The overall game is pretty linear, but offers a few choices on the road. If you encounter a river, you have the option of trekking forward through the river or taking a ferry, for a price of course. But in doing so, you may have to wait a few days for the ferry to arrive, so it kinda makes more sense to caulk up the wagon and float across. Oh good, we didn't die. That's a first. On your journey, you'll encounter some wild experiences. Sometimes your wagon mates will get sick and require some rest, which will then delay your journey. Sometimes your wagon will break down and it will require you to use your supplies you gathered back at town in order to fix it. Sometimes your oxen will just drink bad water because oxen are stupid. Or sometimes your wagon mates will just straight up die. Either way, it's the realism of the simulation that makes it fun. Kind of. The deluxe version features a guidebook that educates you about the landscapes you discover, which adds to that edutainment staple the Oregon Trail is best known for. I gotta say, I love these graphics. They're just so DOS, you know? Now, it's not impossible to take all we see and turn it into a physical board game. In fact, it's probably a lot easier to do so than to turn a game like Fallout into one, which is actually a board game, by the way. 
All right, let's jump straight into the card game. But before we do that, let's take a look at the box design. The design of the box is a clear representation of the travel screen you would see when you're playing the classic version of the game. It's a small box, but it's very eye-catching when I bought it at Target. So the design of the box utilizes the knowledge that I, the customer, would know or have been familiar with the original game. Therefore, I would either pick it up and buy it, or at least consider buying. Basically what I'm saying is that this is a very good design choice to profit off those nostalgia heads. A lot of the graphics from the classic game is seen all around the box. This honestly looks like it's going to take me on an educational trip. The back of the box kind of reminds me of the screen you are greeted with when you first boot up the computer game. I like how the dice on the back of the box are being advertised as being green, which is false advertisement by the way. The only at Target logo is clear and big, just in case you forgot where it came from. In comparison to the Pac-Man board game, I would say I still prefer the arcade look of the Pac-Man board game, but I do appreciate these old computer graphics on the box, which are presented pretty well. Okay, let's open this bad boy up, shall we? I am a tad bit confused by this press spacebar icon. I kept pressing spacebar, but nothing happened. Anyway, inside the box, you'll see they have given you a fair amount of goodies to look at. You got your rule books, you got your mini board in which you can write people's name on. Then you got the main goodies, which are these cards you can use to play. Hence why it's called a card game, in case you were wondering pen that's you know good for writing and lastly you got these crappy dice with stickers on it see that that's peeling now let's talk about these cards i'm kind of stump on the design of the cards because i can't tell if these cards are original artwork or if they were lifted from one of the versions of the game the reason why i'm stump is because of the graphics found on the supply cards i can't recall if any of the classic versions had any items like clean water or medicine or if any of the versions of Oregon Trail had these items. I'm guessing because of these cards that most of the artwork we see are probably original. The closest I got to some design similarities was comparing the Independence Missouri card to the Independence location screen found in the Oregon Trail Deluxe version for the DOS and the 1990s Macintosh version. If you know anything about the artwork of these cards, let me know in the comments. Either way, I really love pixel artwork. There's a certain charm to old DOS games, and these cards really do justice to that era of gaming. The designs of the supply cards just work, and I like how they use the entire space of the cards. It really makes the supply cards visually look and feel important. Plus, look at the little details in the food cards. I mean, yeah, it's just food, but the game specifies and highlights that you're carrying flour and cans of peaches and a barrel of Goldschlagers. I also love the medicine cards because the title of the medicine being called Wonder Tonic, which reminds me of snake oil being sold during these times. It's little details like this that make the design really stick out. Some of the fonts on the Calamity cards being pixelated is a nice touch and it really does feel like I'm reading text from an old computer. The trail cards are... meh. I mean, they convey their point, but in comparison to like town cards or fort cards in the start and finish cards, they're just meh, meh. Now let's talk about these dice. <sighs> Why couldn't they just give us normal dice? I mean, stickers are stupid. Putting them on boards or items are just a waste of time because they're designed for no errors. So if you want a clean sticker assembly, you have to be a very, very careful person. And even if you are, you can still screw up assembling. If you put stickers on the wrong thing, you end up having to carefully peel them off and that ends up wearing out the stick'em side. And sometimes stickers are so good that they end up really attached to the object so that when you peel them off, you end up ripping the sticker or whatever it's attached to. And after using it multiple times, the sticker is going to scratch eventually and when that day does come, I'll be complaining about it. Probably through some subreddit. The gameplay itself isn't too complicated, it's a pretty straightforward game. 
you play up to six players and everyone playing is playing cooperatively. Given that this is a card game, the game revolves around three important cards. You got your trail card that will enable you and your party to travel forward. You got supply cards that are only used to cure or solve calamities. And those calamities come from your calamity cards. Basically, these cards give you challenges and scenarios you must overcome, otherwise you'll die. Also, some calamities can straight up retire you. So a little pro tip when playing, Make sure you really shuffle these Calamity cards because no one wants to draw a snake bite card and die on their first turn. And believe me, you will die. Wow, that sounded way too much like a threat. I'm, I'm really sorry about that, guys. Anyway, besides those, you're also given the start and end cards. Basically, the goal of the game is similar to the PC game where you start at Independence, Minnesota, f Missouri. Basically, the goal of the game is a lot similar to the PC game. You see, you start at Independence, Minnesota, f it's Missouri. Basically, the goal of the game is a lot similar to the PC game. You start at Independence, Missouri, and then you hopefully make it to Willamette, Oregon, alive, ideally. To set up the board, you separate these cards approximately three feet from one another. I know this probably isn't three feet, but it's the best I could do with the table I had, so bear with me on the visuals here. Plus, this is how far I could go and still fit everything into frame. In order to get from here to there, you have to create a trail, and you have to take turns slapping down trail cards and link the trails designed on the cards in order to create a path. What this means is that you can rotate the cards around to see the path links, but you have to perfectly match the entire card with the trail. The challenge comes when you set down five cards, which creates a stack, and you have to stack the last card played on top so that the next player will continue the path from there. I kind of like the stack idea because it really makes it slightly frustrating, but in a fun way. Because you're thinking, you just need one more card and then BAM, you gotta stack it. And the path to Oregon that seems so close ends up being so far away. As you can see, some cards have words on them, some don't, and some have rivers. Most of the instructions on the trail cards are pretty straightforward. River cards require you to roll your dice, and if you get a wrong set of numbers, you lose supplies. If you're somebody who's wondering just how lucky they are in life, or even how unlucky they can be, play a board game with dice. It will pretty much explain a lot on how the universe feels about you. Calamity cards can be dickish, and the only way to overcome them is to do whatever it says on the card. Now, I kind of have a bit of issue with some of these cards, particularly how they're worded. Some are straightforward, like broken arm cards, which state you can't play for two rounds. However, some cards are worded weird and can be a bit confusing. Like this bad water card. It states, flush away bad water with one clean water card. If two bad water cards are collected, then two oxen die. One round of play without an oxen card and everyone in your party is dead. Now here's where I'm confused. So I get that you have to play one clean water card to flush away a bad water, but when you do pull another bad water card and your oxen does die, does that mean I have to play two clean water cards with one oxen card? Or do I just play one clean water card and one oxen card? Or do I just play one oxen card and forget about the clean water card? I would assume I just only play a oxen card and forget about the water, but the card doesn't really explain much. I guess if they don't state it anywhere on the card, then I guess the rule of thumb is just to ignore all the thoughts in your heads we call questions. I might actually be overthinking this, but I guess that's kind of my point, because no machine's telling me what is right or wrong about the way I'm playing. And if it's confusing to you and your party, then there's something to be said about misleading card details. Most Calamity cards are aimed towards the person that drew the card, but some Calamity cards can kill your entire party and cause a game over for the night. If you draw a Calamity card and you cannot resolve it right away, either you have to wait until your next turn or rely on one of your buddies to resolve it for you. Now, this is where those Mario Party flashbacks come into play. You can help your buddy resolve a Calamity card, it's an option, or you can just leave it up to fate. A round starts with a person who drew the Calamity card and ends on them after their next turn. So you can be the nice friend and ensure your buddy's survival or let them fend for themselves and see if they get lucky on their next turn. Cause if they don't resolve it by then, well, I guess you can say it's the circle of life. And that's pretty much the entire game actually. So how does this compare to the classic computer game? 
Well, I think the card game had the general idea of the Oregon Trail, but lacked some of the fundamentals that made the Oregon Trail both educational and arguably a simulation. I mean, think about it. They implemented the computer game into schools, but I really doubt anyone's going to want to implement this card game into any historical curriculum. It's a bit disappointing that the card game does not offer any historical landmarks or history background. I mean, we have two town cards and we have two fort cards that offer advantages for the player. It would have been kind of cool if we had landmark cards that acted similar and also gave a bit of an educational background on the landmark. To be fair, the card game is meant to last for about 30 to 45 minutes, so maybe adding landmarks would have just increased playtime or maybe it would have been too easy on the player depending on the bonus a landmark card would have brought. Overall, I gotta say, as a standalone game, it has some fun value. The card design alone makes this a good collector item if you're into card design. However, I can't overlook that this game can retire you in your party in one round if you're unlucky and you pull an instant death card or you find yourself not able to revive your oxen. Like any board game, it really depends on who you play with. Some people might be absolutely miserable when they play this game. Some might actually enjoy it. Others, if you're like me, might be in the middle where it's like, yeah, it's fun, but it could have been better. It can lack strategy given that all you do is slap down cards and rotate them in order to make a better path. I personally found myself just going with what I had in my hand rather than thinking about my next move. I did come across another Oregon Trail board game that actually comes from Pressman as well. Based off the Amazon still shots, it kind of looks like this version is a bit more accurate to the computer game. At least it looks that way. Hard to say really. But it does seem to have a currency system and the map does look pretty intriguing. But who knows, maybe one day we'll see just how good this one is. If you guys want to see that of course. Hey look at that, we made it through another episode of Loot and Junk Media. Thank you of course for sticking around until the end, I really do appreciate you guys out there watching my reviews, and I really hope you're getting something out of them. I do have two more board games based on video games that I do want to review, which include Fallout Shelter and Five Nights at Freddy's. If any of these board games interest you, or if you know of a new board game based on a video game and you would like to see that on the show, let me know in the comments below. So for my next video, I do have a Halloween special planned. It might be released on Halloween, or it might be released on the week of the holiday. I don't know, I'm still mixed on what I want to do with that. Anyway, look out for that. As always, have a good one folks, and remember, if you're trekking across the country on a wagon, bring extra supplies, don't be that pioneer.